In our next lesson on Chapter 16, Photosynthesis, we want to compare cyclic and non-cyclic flow. Recall from our last lesson that we initiated the system by photooxidation events at Photosystem 2 and eventually passed them to Photosystem 1. At Photosystem 1, a similar series of photooxidation events gave us four electrons and we passed those to a one-electron carrier, ferrodoxin four electrons, four ferrodoxin molecules. What occurs in non-cyclic electron flow is that the electrons are passed from ferrodoxin to NAD+. NADP plus is similar to NAD plus in that it can accept two electrons and one proton. So if we have four electrons to transfer, we need two of those NADP plus molecules and our end product is NADPH. This reaction is catalyzed by ferrodoxin NADP plus reductase. In other words, it transfers electrons from ferrodoxin and thereby reduces NADP plus. So we have a terminal acceptor, in this case, NADP plus. Our net result was that ultimately we took four electrons from two water molecules. We passed those through photosystem 2 to cytochrome B6F ultimately to photosystem 1 and then eventually we produce two molecules of NADPH. And the question is how much energy did that cost us? How many photons did we have to absorb? Well we began with four photooxidation events at, at photosystem 2 for each of those electrons and that represents the absorption of four photons. But the same thing occurs at photosystem 1. Four photooxidation events four photons absorbed, so a total of eight photons gave us two molecules of NADPH. Here is the Z scheme for non-cyclic electron flow. It's an illustration of the changes in the reduction potential and you've seen a portion of this already. Here's our reaction center P680 chlorophyll at photosystem 2. Photon absorption promotes it to a high energy low reduction potential so that it can pass electrons on to plastoquinone. It returns to the ground state and replaces those electrons from water. The electron is passed on down the line to plastocyanin. A similar photooxidation event occurs at P700 chlorophyll photosystem 1. Photon absorption, high energy state, low reduction potential, passes those electrons to ferrodoxin and ultimately to NADP plus and of course it returns to the ground state and replaces those electrons from plastocyanin. So if you look at the changes in the reduction potential and you turn this figure on its side you can see why it's referred to as the Z scheme. Let's compare that to cyclic electron flow. The same series of events is going to occur down to photosystem 1 where it transfers the electron to ferrodoxin. Then something changes. Rather than ferrodoxin passing that electron or electrons on to NADP+, it returns it to cytochrome B6F. Cytochrome B6F passes the electron again on to plastocyanin, which returns it to photosystem 1. And so the same electron essentially cycles through photosystem 1 and cytochrome B6F through the carriers, ferrodoxin and plastocyanin. So you can see why this is referred to as cyclic electron flow. The flow of the electrons through cytochrome B6F is going to involve the, the PQ cycle and that's going to contribute to a proton gradient on the luminal side. In order to keep cyclic flow going, we only have photooxidation occurring at photosystem 1. So we only need light absorption at photosystem 1 to keep this flow going. What are the benefits? Well, we certainly don't recover anything in terms of NADPH. That's not a benefit. It is an effect. The benefit is that we conserve energy in terms of the proton gradient. We contribute to that proton gradient through the cytochrome B6F complex and this will promote ATP synthesis. So non-cyclic electron flow, the benefits are NADPH and some proton gradient we can use to make ATP. 
However, for cyclic flow, the benefits are the proton gradient and the ATP we can synthesize as a result of that. So chloroplasts also have an ATP synthase, similar to mitochondria. We call it the CF1-CFO complex, the C indicating it's in chloroplasts. Similar types of domains, we won't look at the details of the structure here. We have the FO domain, in this case the CFO domain, that's going to translocate protons from the luminal to the stromal side. Remember, it's the luminal side where we're building that proton gradient and that translocation is tied with the phosphorylation of ADP to make ATP. Notice the catalytic domain is on the stromal side. So again we have a proton gradient that's both chemical and electrical. In this case in chloroplasts there is a flux of ions, particularly magnesium and chloride ions, and that tends to diminish the electrical portion of that gradient. We still have the concentration gradient of protons, but the charge difference isn't quite as great. In our next video lesson, we'll see how the Calvin cycle functions to fix carbon dioxide into chemical carbon compounds. Then we can understand why all of the NADPH and ATP generated through the processes of cyclic and non-cyclic flow we examined in this lesson in the processes of photosynthesis are needed.